development. Youths form the biggest percentage of the Ugandan population, a reality that should ideally give them a bigger say in determining the direction the country should take in broad terms. Despite having key organs like the National Youth Council, positions on village councils and some five seats in parliament, the voice of the youth on critical issues is hardly ever heard or even respected. In political parties, the youth still hold lowly positions and are often used only to fight internal political battles as well as uh, uh, to vote as blocks. On the national development agenda, the biggest threat to the youth is poverty and the lack of employment. Government in recent years ushered in free education at both the primary and secondary levels and also liberalized the education sector, leading to mass graduations that contribute to more pressure on the available jobs. During the 2011-2012 uh, national budget, go the government announced a job creation kitty of up to 44.5 billion shillings to enable the youth access credit to start businesses. This program is seen as a practical move by the government to deal with the discontent among the youth, which many say is a political time bomb. Today, youth MPs and the executive uh, of the National Youth Council gave a two-week ultimatum to government to provide credit to these youth, or else they will organize demonstrations and seek a direct political solution to their unemployment. Finance Minister Maria Chuanka, who is handling this matter, has explained that the money will be ready in two weeks' time, <coughs> blaming the delay on Parliament's late passing of the national budget, as well as uh, other administrative issues in the office of the Solicitor General. So tonight we will try to reflect on this matter, but also look at other wider issues affecting the youth, to try and understand what role they are expected to play in strengthening governance and ensuring national development. Our guests tonight, Honorable Monica Amoding, National Youth MP. You're most welcome, Honorable Amodin. Thank you, Mr. Kizito, and uh, good evening, our listeners and viewers. We're also joined by Mr. Samuel Kavmat, the chairman of the National Youth Council. You're most welcome, Mr. Kavmat. Yeah, thank you very much, and uh, good evening uh, to our listeners. Uh, Mr. Kavmat, in the past, Uganda has had a string <coughs> of youth movements at the national level, uh, including in political parties. Mm -hmm. Now we have major youth wings in the major political parties, but the youth are still not vocal. Mm -hmm. What do you think has gone wrong? Uh, to me, uh, before, uh, first of all, I want to thank you and specifically Radio One for this uh, important program and then also that has helped the Guardians out there or to hear on some of the issues and see the views that uh, also listen from their leaders and uh, in special way I wish to also thank you very much for inviting us to be part uh, of this uh, important program. Yeah, you've asked a very good and important question about youth participation, especially in Uganda. I would say the concept youth participation, it, uh, I, I mean, many people have misunderstood it. And uh, both in, two, in, in the governing structures, both uh, in the political structures and, and, and uh, everyone. So you find that as much we have some of these structures that you've talked about, even political parties, still uh, people put uh, youth participation as uh, a way of uh, more like it's more in the form of tokenism mm. because we're just having young people because they are occupying the spaces and that's all for politically for people to know that we're involving young people we've not appreciated the value of having youth to participate in some of these programs because when you talk about youth participation you are talking about uh, uh, three levels of participation there's participation at both program design and planning then there's participation during implementation then there's participation during evaluation and uh, review of the programs so if you only involve uh, a certain sector of people just during maybe programming where you're only consulting them during implementation they're not considered during evaluation they're not considering to me that is tokenism of the highest order and that is what is happening because they just want to excite young people to know yes you're involved in, in some of these programs you vote in political parties go even some of the youth wings so and to others either they look at it as more of a political threat 
say that when you empower some of these young people, they are going to take up leadership. You've seen uh, what we are having in Parliament. Almost the biggest percentage of the members of Parliament are young people. And they've been, uh, I mean, most of the people that they've contested with and one, most of them have been uh, some of our elders. So, to me, it has brought more of that fear. Not forgetting the positive part of it, that they need to be a deliberate way of nature in young people to be able to take up leadership. And to me, there's, there's going to be more of continuity, even involvement of a country. So that, to me, if in a nutshell, that's how I would uh, put and that is the major problem we are having in Uganda. We have one of the best structures. In when you go, even in uh, we have the youth councils, it doesn't exist in any, any country today. I've been a Uganda's representative, the Commonwealth Youth Representative, and I've, I've, we've studied. No country has such kind of structures. Have there is no country apart from Rwanda that looked at Uganda's program of who have youth members of parliament in the structures. No country out there. Has someone will come out and challenge me. You can have young people, but I'm talking about somebody with a constituency of young people when it is his constituency. But because of the problem I've talked about, these structures have ended up being redundant. Honorable Modi, is that something you'd agree with? Well, I want to thank you very much, but um, to start off from where my chairperson has left off, I think that um, I don't quite agree to some extent to this, uh, you know, academia talk a lot of times, you know, that process which is identified and all that. But I think it, it helps in shaping ideology and thinking. However, what I do think is relevant now is that the young people need to understand who they are. That is the problem we have. First of all, I want to state that youth or the young people are the custodians of any country, of any community, of anything that has life. And so, because we have that power, being the custodians, we have all it takes to change whatever we want to see, to influence whatever we want to see, and also to determine the destiny of our countries, our communities, our societies. But what do we see with us, the young people? We are not utilizing this power. We are not taking, uh, you know, center stage uh, in these debates and all that. So what you stated earlier when you, 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 you started is that we are neither heard or even uh, listened to or something like that. I want to say that we are heard, but people choose to ignore the voices of young people. And I also want to speak to the young people out there that this tokenism that we are always waiting for, government needs to do this, government needs to do the other, I think that we need to claim our space. That is where we need to begin from. They need to know that we have the power, and once we use this power, we can get whatever we want. And of course, you know that in politics, uh, I think government listens to voices and, and numbers. And I think I draw the example of women. Women have tried very hard to claim that space, notwithstanding the challenges. You may talk and talk and people don't hear you. And for young people, they just discredit us. They say, oh, those people don't know what they're talking about. They're just ambitious. That is their way. And yet we do have issues. We have the power to influence, to change, to do everything. And so I want to speak to young people today that this time, the time is up for us to expect tokenism from government. It is time for us to take center stage, make a contribution on one hand, but also make government understand that we can no longer be taken for granted. You can no longer be taken for granted. Mr. Kavuma, you said that uh, Uganda is one of the in the leadership positions in recognizing youth and give them, giving them structures, LC1, mm. parliament, and so on. Mm. And yet you say that this is tokenism. What more would you like government to do, for instance, in creating some of these structures? Yeah, uh, thank you very much. I think uh, that will help me to add on from where I stopped. Uh, like I said, most of these structures have ended up being very redundant in the way, uh, uh, you know, uh, most of these institutions that have been put in place. The main objective was to build capacity of young people to be able to prepare themselves, to prepare them to be able to take up leadership and also participate in other levels of development, whether in the socially, economically, even in the private sector. That's why we have such kind of, 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 of structures. And when you talk about specifically like these other youth structures, they're not even supposed to be so much partisan because when you talk about partisan, there are other structures like in the youth leagues which are out there which have to pay more partisan but uh, a one way of empowering young people because you know there's no school where you're going to go to be nurtured in terms of going to leadership so you must be given a platform somewhere where you can be able to participate directly at all levels that's why you find they have youth counselors they elect at local government and all at that level but up, up, apart 
from only having those structures, they are not empowered. They are not supported to do the work they are supposed to be doing. Mm. For them to do their advocacy <coughs> at every level, they are not supported. Let me, I will give you an example. Uh, since 1993, the youth council structures had, uh, where people, young people were just elected for purpose of saying, yes, I am a youth leader in this particular district. But how is that young person going to be able to meet his fellow young people? If he wants to go and meet uh, maybe at local government, find out what are some of the youth programs, how can he, he cannot be able to move. So until when we did uh, strong advocacy, uh, government came and said, okay, for purposes of you to be able to do some work, we can be able to facilitate you. And by then, the districts were like 56. They facilitated them with uh, 1 billion Uganda shillings. So meaning a particular district will have like 10 million, 15 million. So where they can be able to uh, engage their leaders at that level, they can be able to meet their young people. They can be able to monitor. You know, in this, in the all government programs, in all governments over the world, you, it is a group that can do continuous advocacy, follow up, and demanding for space the way the Honorable said. Like, for example, women. And for the advantage of women, for them, they are permanent women throughout. But young people's transition. You're a young person for a particular age, then tomorrow you're no longer a young person. Mm -hmm. So that is, you need to nurture them to go throughout, but you need to fully facilitate them to do that. Right now, the districts are uh, moved over to 112. <coughs> yes. The funds have reduced up to 600 million. So you find a district youth council in a whole district like Kampala receiving 450,000 shillings a financial year. 450,000? A quarter. You got a shilling. A quarter. Now, for three months. Yeah, for three months. Now, um, how can they even be able to meet their own young people wherever they are out there? That's 150,000 every month. Absolutely. So assuming you invite them here, how are they going to be able to reach out? So it becomes very difficult in terms of going. I've even seen it even in political parties themselves. Mm. They're just occupying op uh, opportunities, just or offices. And then also, when you're having this direct engagement, involve them. Involve them at different level, like I've already I've, I've said. Don't just say we are only calling you to consult and that's all. Involve them at every study. You are building their capacity. Tomorrow, such a young person, you've nurtured him, is going to know how do I deal with such situation? How do I go? You politically, tomorrow you're going to have someone who's good. But you find that today you know that even young people in political parties, they're always invited when there are demonstrations, when there are campaigns for them to put up posters, when uh, someone uh, uh, to. Two politicians want to fight each other. They mobilize young people to go in their camps to do that. That's where they feel that they enjoy, they, they are participating. But when you go in development processes and everything, they are left aside. So to me now, there you're just having structures to make young people happy that you're involved. But don't, so to me, that is tokenism. Right. <coughs> the ice order. And that's, that's the point which I was trying to make. All right. We'll follow yeah. up on that a little bit later. Listeners, this is Spectrum on Radio 1 tonight. What role should the youth in Uganda play to strengthen governance and development? Our guests tonight, Honorable Monica Adma Amading, National Youth MP, and Mr. Samuel Kavma, Chairman of the National Youth Council. You two will be able to contribute to this discussion. Later, you'll be able to call in and make your comments uh, live on air. You can also go to our Facebook page, uh, which is Spectrum Debate, and apply to join. Even though you haven't joined, well, you can apply to join, but you can also post a comment. The topics are normally sent onto that uh, forum five hours before we begin here, so you can post your comment in advance. But you can also call comment even as we speak and those comments will be read on air before we're out of this room. Honorable Amodin, you've been given the structures, you have not created an impact. Some people will say that's confirmation that the youth need to wait a little bit longer. I don't agree with that. A little bit longer means how long? Well, I think that that is a political statement which is used to keep away young people, uh, particularly, uh, of course, that age group from participation, like the chairperson has noted. But I do think that uh, by the time somebody clocks 20, 20 years, uh, up to about 35, you know, you know exactly what you are up to and what the world is all about. And so what we only need to see happening is strengthening that capacity. That's what we are not seeing 
in terms of resources like the challenges that have been highlighted by the National Youth Council and also in terms of capacity in, 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 in further, you know, uh, giving them the, 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 the ability to further make tangible contribution. But I think it should not be said that the youth should wait. Wait for how long? Uganda, for example, is um, the, the population right now is 77% under 30. And you're telling all those people about more than 15 million to wait. And then the other, and you're seeing what is happening, that the, the generational gap is bigger and growing bigger every other day because the senior people who are senior citizens in the country do not look at this as a challenge. And right now we are grappling with how to deal with young people across the country, how to deal with young people across the continent. It's the biggest and the hottest challenge before governments and other uh, development partners. And so we cannot give that time frame. We need to see, we need to respect how society grows and how it evolves, that there will always be young people who need this kind of support and this kind of policy needs to be in place. And as they grow into other spaces, others are coming in because there will always be a young person in any society. So I, th I, th I, I really think that policymakers need to really strengthen that area area of supporting young people in terms of finances, in terms of human resource development and other policies. But also, by the time somebody is 30 years, 35, 29, 25, you can make a contribution to your community. And that's what I'm challenging young people, that Jesus himself was 30 when he made the biggest contribution. We should not be told to wait. Waiting for what? He died at age 33. He died at age 33 after making a very big contribution at years. 30 years. In three years. Right. Yeah. Let's look at Parliament. Again, for that that point in parliament uh, we hear mostly only the voice of gerald karuhanga youth western where the rest of you when you talk about fighting corruption creating an impact well i don't quite agree with that because uh, since we entered parliament of course um we have been doing quite a lot of work in terms of fighting corruption and those who really care to listen have heard us in many spaces both inside parliament and outside and not only gerald karuhanga there are other uh, mps that don't represent youth but they are younger they are actually younger, 23, 24, 25. We've been talking about all these things. However, of course, uh, uh, Karuhanga's issue was uh, uh, he hit the record because of uh, a very, very, that time we were still trying to understand how to engage and he hit an issue that had never before really done on the on the floor of parliament and tabling such things which are very sensitive. I think he is, uh, is about to be awarded a major general because it is a risk. It's a very high risk agenda and of course uh, many people would not have the courage but also what gives him the advantage is that he sits on the other side of, uh, of, of, of parliament and then NRM you still have to find your, your space and find a way you know you don't all ad adopt one strategy of engagement you may use different strategies as individuals whereas it might be easier for him to do that other members might use other strategies which we have been using consistently right. but I want to say that the ninth parliament has been doing this as a team and we have consistently engaged on this issue and we still have a lot of work ahead of us as a team and of course it's a relatively young parliament probably one of the youngest the youngest in the, in the region the youngest we have uh, average 65 percent of, of parliament is 40 below right which is a very big very big uh, 65 percent of and, and, yes. and, and, and i think it's only called on average of uh mp but i think the last about 43 is 43 mm -hmm. yeah the one they reported it so that's the youngest the in the world youngest in the, the youngest world. parliament in the world mm -hmm. yeah that's something not worthy yeah because uh, i think the, the youngest was around 47 so this one yeah, uh, Average, yeah. Yeah. It's for so you have a chance to perform. Let's talk about nurturing, yeah. Mr. Kalba. You said uh, the youth expect to be nurtured. How do you want them to be nurtured? Uh, to me, I would say is uh, it has to be in all sectors. I'll give you an example, an uh, economic area. Let me give you an example in that area. Our brothers, the Indian community. When you see an Indian in business, sometimes you see them even working with their children. And you know, so I, I, that, that's in fact the other argument I've been uh, talking to my colleagues when they talk about entrepreneurship. I'm telling them entrepreneurship is a culture. You nature somebody to go through it. It becomes a habit. For you to save it, it's supposed to be a habit. So you see how they even nurture their children to go through that. So that they prepare them to even take up the businesses mm. you are taking. Mm -hmm. So it has to be applied in all sectors. The way you'd have your children in your home and say, yes, I'm, I'm growing old. I have my sons. I have my daughters. They've grown up. But you have to bring them so that to 
more when you are not there, mm -hmm. they are able to carry forward. Carry forward. Mm -hmm. So it has to be both, both in terms of leadership and in terms also economic wise. Uh, th th to me, that's political. Pol political. But the challenge we have today is our leaders, and this goes to all parties. It's on record because for us, we interact with young people from different parties. Yes. When they see a young person coming up, very vibrant and coming up, mm. that one is a political threat. All right. It's going to take up my space. And today, in fact, some of them are used to fight wars within themselves. Instead of saying we are now, you know, the, some uh, other people call it cadre identification within parties yes. themselves. Bring them up and say, tomorrow, if I'm no longer the, the Secretary General, this is what people are going to take up. And say that even young people grow up, up when they have their models at every party. But but you know, you, you you know the politics here. Even how the parties people are, are, are really fighting, and these are young people. There is one of the parties where this one creates a sector, this one creates a sector. Politically, that is very very dangerous. And even it comes up. I'm I'm seeing it even uh, generally. You see young a young person coming up in a constituency. Now, for example, I'll give you an example. Our youth members of parliament. I know they have where constituency they are coming up. Now look at such at such a level, where at such an a tender age someone is in parliament such an experience but someone who comes in his constituency is going to look at her as a political threat yes. so to me that's where it comes up we need to have a good will for people to know that we are building and it has to be in all sectors economic wise uh politically and going out and uh, you can see with other countries that are going up i mean you i mean i've much i would say the politics in south africa is still at a low they are still young after in, uh, their independence in 1994. Yes. But you see how, in terms of how they're building their youth movement, mm. you see even uh, the, just the nearby country here, I mean in, in Tanzania, with how they are, I know they're trying, uh, they have much when you go there, there are challenges, but I have much it's not coming out, but they must be for sustainability and for the progress of such a country. There need to be a deliberate policy on how young people can be nurtured through. And that's, that's the major objectives as to why such institutions are in place, so that they can find space like for example you are aware some we have some uh, we are making a, a, a kind of account among the youth councillors who have gone to the districts yeah. we have more we have over 10 of them who are now speakers district speakers right and these are young people who are coming as youth councillors now what just look at such a young person the capacity you build in him by the time after that right. you're going to have a very strong leader okay. so i think that's why we have such kind of structures and that was my point and that's why i was saying if we don't change this then we're not going to make the objective as to why these institutions are in place okay honorable madina i'd like you to talk to us about some of your specific demands and about the money yeah. but before we do that mr kavuma you mentioned south africa yourself mm. uh, julius malema youth leader of the ANC, mm. has become a firebrand some he's only 30 years old some people think some of you the youth mm. you technically become firebrands and mm. destroy everything but mm -hmm. yeah and i think you know to me that one comes up without even i've much other countries I've tried it because I even uh, I was following up very closely about the issue of, of Malema even when they went to court and all that went good this committee but uh, to me as young people sometimes when you take up leadership you become very excited and that's a critical point where we even need a lot of what mentorship. advice a lot of mentorship we need our strong uh, I mean you need to identify a model that you're going to look at in terms of how things are going on right. and that's why you find that even Malema himself you know when you become very excited and you know you sometimes have a lot of unexpected from young people because that's a, an age where somebody very so that's why they need really constant guidance and how things are going and on to me that's well well intention mm, mentorship yeah, absolutely not suspicion mm -hmm. listeners this is spectrum on radio and you've done a good thing to tune in tonight what are we discussing what role should the youth in uganda play to strengthen governance and development we'll go for a break we'll be we'll be coming back and when we come back we'll talk about the money and other things stay tuned just like an uncursed diamond is brought to life by a max skill and dedication only our brewmaster holds the secret to crafting a crystal malt lager under the exacting international standards at now breweries he uses only the finest most carefully selected grains of roasted crystal malt and sets in motion the delicate process of releasing their full roast the result is a world-class beer with a fresher aroma a richer golden color and the maltier taste Nile Gold Crystal Malt Lager Beyond an Ordinary Malt Not for sale to persons under 18
Spectrum on Radio 1 FM 90 is brought to you by Stanbic Bank. Welcome back on Spectrum tonight. What role should the youth in Uganda play to strengthen governance and development? Our guests tonight, Honorable Monica Amadim, National Youth MP, and uh, for Northern? National. National Female MP for Pamela. National Youth MP. And Mr. Samuel Kavma, Chairman of the National Youth Council. You'll be able to call in and contribute to this, this discussion or send your comment through uh, SMS service type, the word Spectrum, message, question, or comment, send it 7197, or go to Facebook, Spectrum Debate, and send your your message should be read on air before we're out. Uh, Honorable Amoding, what key demands do you have on government? You know there's this 44 and a half billion shillings that you are supposed to get, mm -hmm. which you haven't got, <coughs> and you threaten to strip to the waist if you don't get it soon. <laughs> 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 Well, just to start off from there, I think that we have many, many, many demands uh, uh, that we are calling government to, to, to respond as soon as possible. But when we started this parliament, the biggest challenge before us was unemployment. Unemployment, unemployment, unemployment. Everywhere you go, the youth are complaining, they are crying, they want government to intervene to support their small projects, especially those youth out of school and those that are out from university and other tertiary institutions were crying no jobs you sit at home two years and all that and so i think unemployment still is one of the biggest challenges and we we really wanted immediate interventions in this area so we were very very happy to hear government talk about the 44.4 billion among us all the other plans that will address this challenge and uh, that money was meant to enhance youth entrepreneurship in the sense that if i have my small business if i have my small innovative idea I can be able to uh, access support from a government particularly through this money and support my, my, my idea and in this idea we, we thought that we could become a small China in a way because most of the work the small projects that we see in the Chinese country and other Asian countries is done by young people right. encouraging innovation and so when the minister announced this money in, 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 July, in June the other the other year we were excited about it and so we started working very closely with the minister to support her and to ensure that uh, this money becomes a reality and even then goes beyond what its expectations are for this year to become a more sustainable and long-lasting fund like we've seen in other countries like Kenya South Africa and others which we can talk about later unfortunately it is seven months nothing is be, you know being implemented because we do understand that this money actually is not part of government's consolidated fund it is coming as a small you know donation or token from one of our good partners the german uh, country and so we hoped that it would not find any encumbrance as soon as maybe two months or so the guidelines would be in place the mous that need to be signed between our governments and other people would have been done the by now of understanding. yes and uh, the money would be in the banks unfortunately seven months we are left with five months and we are challenged the youth are asking everywhere we go over the Christmas break we were overwhelmed some youth wanted to come on the street as far as two months back we told them wait government is working on guidelines we are about to you know mobilize you for this bigger fund but unfortunately that hasn't happened and so today we have we have started this year with a new mode and I, I, I think that maybe our ministers don't listen to dialogue and negotiation they respond to emergencies and you know so we have promised the minister of finance that we are about to arrive there in swimsuits, in swimsuits? <laughs> in swimsuits and other things probably on the streets and we have also said this type of demonstration has never been seen before i'm sure that uh, when we do it it will go down on it will be a chilling experience because it will bring on board over 15 million young people from this country and so we don't want to get to that level where we have to talk and you know pull ropes with government over you know simple business this is an administrative issue and we've made it clearly to the Minister of Finance that is administrative just sending this money to banks is going to be borrowed it's right. not going to be free money right 
Okay. And so that was our specific demand. So you don't have a problem with the amount. We're going to hear from the finance minister just now. Yeah. You don't have a problem with the amount. It's only the procedure of releasing it. No. Yeah, we, we, the I guidelines. Mean, to, to me, I would say, uh, in, in, anyway, to start from there and not to go back, I think with the amount, what we said, you know, there's a saying uh, in uh, in one of our language, which I'll put in English, that uh, when uh, you are beginning for meat and someone gives you a small piece, before you, your mm, before you negotiate for a big piece. Mm -hmm. So what we said, uh, even uh, after the presidential directive in Arua mm. to meet the minister, we told the minister, yes, we've allocated these monies. What you do is, uh, since let, let us have short time uh, uh, proposals mm. to implement for this financial year. And we told her that uh, Uganda is not the first institution to come up with a youth fund. In Kenya here, after the post-election violence, mm. they came up with a fund. In fact, they never came up with how it they came up with a permanent youth fund. Mm. And they gave us with a status of a parastato, which is supporting small enterprises to go in. Because as we go to the bank, you know, not all, en not all enterprises, the banks are going to support them and give you money. So that would be a long term. Since, 19, since 2006 up to now, it has been there. In fact, it is one of the model funds that people would say. That's in Kenya. Mm. That's that in Kenya. Quite innovative. In yeah. fact, we, we told her that what you do is let us have this money in the banks as we, the means of finance, sits down to come up with a permanent solution in the next financial year. So that's not only for this budget. Yeah. She asked, in fact, she even sent, sent it back to us and said, go and bring to me a, a business proposal. Right. We wrote to the Speaker of Parliament. She even uh, uh, supported our youth members of Parliament to this very country. Yes. We came up with a proposal and put them on her desk. Okay. Let's so up to now. That, that's why I would say is uh, uh, right now we are saying, let us have what is there for the next financial year then our next step will be i mean this these are small monies for at least for a, for a start let it be there but the next financial year it needs to be revised to be expand let's hear from the finance minister honorable maria Chwanka right now 44 billion shillings was allocated of this 16.5 billion was allocated through kampala capital city authority for improvement of workplaces for uh, vendors and other artisans to work from including the youth of the remaining money 3 billion was allocated to the Ministry of Gender, Labor and Social Development for training purposes, which left 25 billion for the Youth Venture Capital Fund. 12.5 billion was allocated from KFW, a German NGO, and the other 25.5 billion was matching funds contributed by participating banks, who are CFCU, Standic and Centenary Bank. The 25 billion was a combination of the private sector and NGOs. There is no government money. 25 billion will be available to youth entrepreneurs through the three banks participating. The delay in implementation has been that as a government agency, the Ministry of Finance cannot sign the MOU with the commercial banks until the Solicitor General has approved the MOU. The Memorandum of Understanding was sent to the Solicitor General's office in November. But however, we are informed that due to work pressures on other legislation and the intervening uh, holiday period, it has still been there. However, I pledge that it will be out of there before the beginning of next week. And once it's signed, the money will be immediately available for application by youth entrepreneurs through uh, guidelines which have already been issued through the various MPs and uh, youth organizations to go and apply to obtain uh, loans. So why don't you want to wait? I would say, basing on her, I, I think uh, previously, uh, where we uh, a bit, uh, I wouldn't say disagree, but where we deferred from what uh, her point was one. Uh, immediately after we made those proposals, we wrote to her and we told her, oh, the minister, we want you to officially come out with an explanation. There was silence up to now. The other point, even how she made it, she said that by November, the memorandum was with the Solicitor General, but because of other pressing issues. So it is a question of priority. priority. Mm. What is the priority? With the Solicitor General. And the young people, uh, is, uh, is it the young people who are, are the priority or is it other issues? Mm. So if you don't come up, you know very well that with government, it's he who advocates strongly. It's he who is who wins, wins and becomes, becomes a priority. Right. If you don't come out and say we, because I, I've always told everyone, whatever I've gone, even the minister, that today with the statistics which we have in Uganda, the issues of unemployment is a, in a, a at, a, at a level of a crisis. Yeah. Which the issues of young people should be a priority. Having eighty-three percent among young people unemployed 
it is almost the highest. Right. So, and you say, she said, with the, and we know about a lot of issues coming up, corruption, now, now MPs are going to break off and go to, you know, for a, a retreat by so the it. time we come. By the time we think about it, the financial is going to end. So that's why I say, can we be, can we be made as a priority such that with, by this, this month, this comes out clearly. And then also the, we need the guidelines. And that was one of our challenge. Because when that fund came out, we asked the minister, do you have guidelines? Yes. We realized money was allocated before guidelines right. being, being designed. You see, because young people are explaining to us, we don't want, are uh, asking us. So we don't want to go and speculate before mm -hmm. young people. They are asking us. And the other thing is, government had not come up to tell us what is our role in terms of mobilizing and explaining young people. There was nowhere. It was only finance and banks and mm -hmm. that's all. But young people don't know where I mean so finance is. They are only running to the youth leaders and asking them explain to us. In fact, those are our specific demands and we are, shall be happy if she says by the end of next week yes this is done mm. we are going to be happy let them come out and uh, let her uh, 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 invite uh, the stakeholders uh, explain to us the guidelines give it to us because we go and explain to the rest of the young people so that they'll ask you yes mr chairman honorable how do i access this fund what does what are some of the conditions we need to be able to have all this so that was our strong issue and that's why i would say as well as it's a priority and they're saying by the end of and it's good it has come from our own words and say she's pledging by the end of next week. That's within our deadline that we set, which is 20th of January. Mm -hmm. <coughs> so, no, Amadi, it's not just the ma about the money, it's the guidelines as well. You need those. We need the guidelines, like the chairman has noted, is that uh, we, we, of course, these guidelines talk about who can access, where and how, mm -hmm. and one of the guidelines is that the banks are going to distribute this money, DFCU, Centenary Bank, and Stanbic, and the beneficiaries, the draft guidelines, and we sat with the minister and also give her our, our opinion about the guidelines and we hope that they will take into consideration some of our views and uh, one of it is that uh, 21 to 35 will be beneficiaries if you're aged in that category 21 to 35. 35 years and of course the initial amount would be like a hundred thousand to five million to, to yeah to, to five million we had requested that they extend it to 10 million but they restricted it 10 million for uh, expanding already existing uh, business ventures and of course it's small money but it's a good way to start like the chairperson has noted next financial year we shall lobby for more and uh, the other challenge we noted with the guidelines is that they are requiring that you have a certificate of all level that means that the majority of young people who have never gone to school and reached that level will not be able to benefit this year and we made it very clear to the Minister of Finance that that will not work because there are other innovative young people who have not reached that level but they have their projects which could be funded so so these and uh, others are some of the guidelines that uh, had been uh, drafted already. But of course, one of the requirements will be that you need to be trained in business skills. And that's the money the minister is talking about, the 3.5, which is at the Ministry of Gender that's and big. Youth, which has also not been uh, sent to that ministry as we speak. And so there are so many dynamics that we need to chat out. But we want to just emphasize <coughs> to the minister that this thing can no longer wait. And now here in the picture, the solicitor general has been uh, featured in and of course you know these technocrats they work as they want i think this one for him is not a priority he just chooses what is important what is noted as political but i want to assure the solicitor general that uh, this is more political than anything you noted the akizito uh, earlier that this is this this youth issue is a time bomb we are dealing with people who are this book. Right? The same suits. The same suits. wake up in the morning. We have now weather, stuck to wake up now. And uh, the moment we are needed on the street, in fact, for us, will be the first to wear those swimsuits. My parents don't do it. <laughs> 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 and of course, you know how I look now. That would be very disastrous. <laughs> but I'm sure it would send out a very important message. Because desperate action, you know, situations require desperate actions anyway. But we didn't want to reach that level. So I, I really want to appreciate the minister's response. Mm. Uh, it has shown us that she's uh, having her ears on the ground on whatever is happening. Mm. And we are only praying that next week we can be able to mobilize young people across the country and tell them that, look here, the money is here. Everyone that needs money, the money is going to be in the banks for you. 
<laughs> so in the meantime, you can start with what's available in a week's time from now. Yeah. And, yeah. and then later you can advocate for a mm. shift in the guidelines. Mm. Mm. All level, and know, and, 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 and uh, we, we want to ask the minister, as uh, she had started previously, uh, let her doors be very open. Yeah. To the yeah. Let her doors be open. Mm. In, for purposes of dialogue. Because at certain point, I, we know there are a lot of issues which are pressing. We are now almost in a budget process, mm -hmm. which is starting for the next financial year. Mm. She's very, very busy, but the issue of young people, they've overweighted. Young people were ec excited. In fact, the statement she made during the budget process excited a lot of young people out there. So, right now, we are playing the role that Minto Finance would have played to go to the rest of the young people. That's why we're right. saying we need more of dialogue and we need, need more of openness. Let us know what is happening. But the issue of uh, having silence, it is a problem. A problem. Ab yeah. ab absolutely. And then the issue of, uh, you know, telling us that it's next week, you reach next week, it's the other week, it's right. the other week. That's why we have our ultimatum, which is 20th of January, and uh, we are not joking, it's not uh, it's not just we are making fun. Mm. We are saying we are tired to be to take most of the bullets from the young people. Mm -hmm. I mean, telling us it seems. I mean, what is happening from the young people? So we you are say saying enough is enough. Enough is enough. You want to go to the streets? Uh, no, no, no. We are taking the young people to her by the means of finance. Are you going absolutely in buses and vans? And yes, yeah. we are going out people and they come around her ministry mm -hmm. and wait for for her. And right. I think now and that's why we she right. says that by next week. Mm. We are hopefully waiting, and we shall be very extremely happy. This she is be one of the biggest heroes <laughs> if she if it is implemented next week. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Let's hear from your attendees. Our numbers: nine zero four one four three four eight one 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 zero three one two two six zero three nine zero zero three one two two six one three nine zero. When you call in, please tell us your name and where you're calling from. You can also send your message via text. Spectrum, hello. Let's switch off your radio or walk away from it. Thank you. Sorry about that. Your name? Uh, my name is Michael Weber, and I'm calling from Nalia. Uh, I really um, welcome the idea from the panelists, and uh, thanks for being such a, a program. Uh, my biggest question is that um, when I was addressing this, I hope that you have addressed political interference into such things. That is one. Two is how do we, some of us have already got uh, small businesses, carpentry running, and we are starting in terms of growing guinness and um, other uh, food crops now which are turning into cash crops. How can we be facilitated to access? Because that is the main thing that we are waiting to hear. We want to know how are the processes in foreign world, who is, who is the chief contacts for the different zones. Thank you. Question will be answered. Spectrum, hello. Hello. Your name? Hello. Hello. Good evening. Good evening to you. Your name? Uh, my name is Benjamin. I'm calling from Bukoto. Yes, Benjamin. I want to thank the panelists. But my biggest question is, all these years there have been programs, there have been schemes that are giving money to different people, the banks, microfinance institutions, and so on. What, apart from the age uh, bracket, are the main uh, benefits or things that will make uh, this fund very different? That is, that will enable the youth to access the money. Whereas, even today, we know that some people have been getting money, say, from microfinances and banks. So, what are those very specific characteristics that will make this fund different in terms of enabling the youth to access the money? Thank you. Spectrum, hello. 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 I'm James calling from Masaka. Joseph in Masaka, yes. We are behind the youth. Because even as the pensioners, now nobody has explained what is taking place. So we are also The financial year is getting to an end. So we are behind the youth. Okay. Spectrum, hello. Please hello. Please switch off your radio or walk a distance from it. Hello. Your name? Hello. Hello. You love and speak from your name. Switch off your radio, please. Hello? Hello? When you call it, please switch off your radio and walk some distance from it so we don't get that echo. Spectrum, hello? Yes, good morning. Good evening. Good evening, your name? This is uh, Sam Rao from Muria. 
Yes, sir. I salute uh, Mr. Kabuma and uh, Monica in the studio. Happy New Year. Happy New Year, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, Edmond, I would like to first appreciate those youth who are in the studio. One thing I would like to advise, especially Monica in Parliament, is that please champion the cause of youth. Now, for you, Kabuma, you really have to do a lot because one of the greatest failures of our time is is, is, is poor organizational aspect. The youth have not organized themselves, we have not uh, positioned ourselves in uh, a way that we, we are able to tap uh, what uh, Uganda has and what government has always offered to us. We have always been pushed into fighting on very, very trivial issues. So you really have to be sure that you organize the young people of this country under your regime, not like the past so that we are able to tap the resources that the government has. Thank you very much. Spectrum, hello? Hello? Yes, your name? Hello? Please switch off your radio and talk to us now. Yeah, this is Mike Sabalu. Yes, Honorable Mike Sabalu, you're welcome. Uh, first of all, I would like to congratulate and thank uh, the youth leaders, the Honorable and the Chairman, uh, for articulating the issue. Issues of the youth. There's a radio the that, that still feeds in. Correct. There's a radio that still feeds in. If you could switch it off. Oh, okay, okay, okay. You know I'm in the car. Go on. But let me maneuver quickly. Go on. And now, I, I, the youth are uh, a basis for our continuity as a nation. And therefore, we must nurture and develop good youth leadership uh, for sustainability. And uh, I'm proud to be part of that process. I was one of the youth in the field, and we are the ones who make sure that our constitution provides for youth leadership at all levels. Otherwise, we had the issues with some people who didn't want youth to get engaged in the leadership. So when we get uh, honorables like they are in the, in the studio, it is something to write home about. Now, regarding the program that is being undertaken, I really want to advise uh, my very good friend, Honorable Maria Chiwonika, to ensure that the, that program works out as it was envisaged. One thing that needs to be done when you are dealing with issues of the youth is to ensure that you communicate regularly to avoid an information gap. Because when you create an information gap, then you create saturation and you can have uh, activities that are very undesirable. Uh, I can't uh, imagine seeing my good friend among uh, Amadeen uh, in a swimsuit in her state. <laughs> uh, that would be a front page a picture, definitely. And we want to see her on the front page for other more progressive uh, things like handing over this money to the youth. So let this be given priority because we want to create entrepreneurship within the strong base of the youth. And they've come out, they need assistance, they are willing to work, they've got the drive, let's empower them and create a better stable future for the country. Once you empower the youth, you are sure that the future is more predictable. So the program is good, let it be implemented in time and rolled out to benefit as many youth as possibly we can. Otherwise, as for the leaders, I'm happy we have youth with a knowledge base who are in leadership and the future of this country is bright. Thank you. Honorable Sebalu, thank you. Thank you. Our final caller tonight, Spectrum. Hello. 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 Oh. Good evening, Spectrum. Good evening, sir. Your name? Uh, this is Colin Bracarimari from Akira West. Um, uh, I'm, uh, I'm wishing uh, um, being and best in this new year. They stay in a, in a strong year. And then the youth are most, most uh, the most youth not um, employed. Um, it happened, it's come to happen that I'm the um, patron of Boda Boda Riders in Kampala. I'm the one who started Boda Boda Riding in Kampala. Now I'm the patron. Now, and we have talked about uh, the age uh, for qualification. And uh, most of the youth who are engaged in Boda Boda Riding and others are not, have not have this, this level. And then uh, I don't know what, what criteria and what, 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 what measures are they going to do, uh, mostly the, the, the youth leaders, to, to tackle that problem so that all the, the youth are involved in this scheme. This is the Kulimra Karimari from Material West. 
in the Honorable Madin. Yes, please. Um, uh, uh, the patron of Boda Boda, I want to thank you very much. At this level, we had uh, listened to what the, the plea of the Minister of Finance. They told us for this financial year, let's address this category. However, like the chairperson has noted, is that uh, we have a better, you know, initiative that we are working on, which we are going to launch later, which will address the entire country, youth in and out of school, which the chairman alluded to earlier, which is going to be a bigger framework. And so we will talk with our youth patiently to, to, to agree to this because sometimes you have a, you know, a, you, you, you have to agree with the, the, the stakeholders, win-win, how do we arrive at consensus? And so for this financial year, we've said, well, if a few can benefit, because it's going to be, a, a, you know, a, a very, every year, it will be rolling every every financial year. And we're going to work with the minister to refine these guidelines to ensure they benefit all the youth, I think, on this issue. I, I want to respond quickly on how different this fund is going to be. First of all, this one will be mostly, because right now the interest rate is about 25. Some banks are actually having 28%, percent, 30%. Percent. But this one is fixed interest, 10%. Percent. And also I want to inform listeners that the other funds, and Tandikwa, Yes Fund and all that, were more of grants, which were not sustainable. This is a business-oriented approach that government has adopted. And we agree to it as well, because we see that if the banks do it as a business initiative, it will be more sustainable, because this money will be returned and it can be given to other people. And also, on the other hand, there are a bit of uh, loose guidelines that will facilitate young people, knowing that we don't have collateral, but we have ideas. And so that has been taken into consideration. The banks will be advised to take priority and to look at young people as fundable and also can be, you know, uh, uh, have their businesses, uh, or, you know, develop further. Can you give us briefly about the guidelines? Because without collateral, how do they do it? Without do collateral, now they will need training. One of the areas we have emphasized on is that a training will be able to, to show a certificate of training. That's part right. of the guideline. So that's going to be the, like the yeah, that's the main issue actually. Training. Certificate of training, having been trained in entrepreneurship and business, you know, generally the process of business and, you know, what you need as a person to develop your initiative. That's the core issue. But I think also we are going to refine this further. I think the minister is going to invite us again to look at these guidelines which they've finally come up with. But we had earlier given her our position on these issues. There was also another, I think somebody wanted some kind of guideline there. Who is involved? What is going to happen? We've been talking about this. The money is going to banks. Nobody will be responsible for it. So there is not going to be corruption on this money because people will access money through the banks. And so banks how do you are know? Very this money is in Nadia Michael. How does it get there? You would have to go to any branch in the, uh, under this simply bank. Goes to a bank. Yes, simply goes to a bank. No, a youth fund. After getting the training, Yes. And of course, probably they had wanted us to have a recommendation from people in the community who are 40 years and above, but right. we rejected that because we they said, why does it have to be somebody who is 40 years old to recommend a youth? What right. if they have another peer who can recommend them? Who is the, you know, somebody Some who, is, yeah, who can really recommend with uh, visibility and, you mm. know, somebody stable in society? I right. can recommend many youth, mm. okay. but I'm not 40 years. Right. Yeah. And the purpose of recommending is to make sure that there's evidence that uh, the business you are doing is, exists right. and it's located in that area. So that people don't just come with briefcase or uh, b uh, businesses and then just for purpose of getting money. Right. So I think that's why they are talked about that okay. recommendation. Yeah. But I want to thank Honorable Mike Sebalu. Regular communication is very paramount and you know it causes a lot of spec speculation if you don't communicate like he has noted. And of course my friend Sam, that we are trying very hard, we are working, we are committed to the youth cause in this country. In our time we will try as much as we can to contribute to, uh, to, to these discussions and debate at national level right. as well as the <coughs> local level. Okay. Mm. So uh, I think some of the questions, one, especially starting with some, I think uh, uh, my brother, the moderator, would either find space sometime right. to invite us and uh, we roll out what are some of the plans that we are looking at. No, we don't, we don't have a problem inviting you. Yeah, again, because, because today, today, swim, so yeah. you need to think about <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and I think uh, especially because this is one aspect which we had uh, uh, come also to discuss and then look at what some of the areas that we are looking at capacity building for young people and other programs that you know youth unemployment employment this is just one of the strategies right. of supporting okay. the small enterprise one of it we'll have to and uh, I think like you said we uh, most of the areas the guidelines I uh, wouldn't wish to speculate because mm -hmm. right. what we are talking about is with the proposals we put to the minister mm -hmm. and that's why we are demanding can we see the guidelines what mm -hmm. do you arrive at at okay. this moment yeah all right we we'll have to go back before we go some of the questions that came through through 
uh, via our Facebook page, uh, Ronald Moses, Richard Moses <coughs> says, I honestly believe that st a stimulus package was a mistake. Having only 26 billion available for borrowing by the youth is just like a drop of water in the, in the desert. It simply cannot do anything to solve youth unemployment or help youth to substantially improve their productivity, creativity, and skills development. Mm -hmm. I surely believe the youth should first demand government to increase the package because it's so little. Censure must only premi be premised on the basis that the 26 billion is only accessible to the youth and cannot be accounted for. Vincent Mayanja says, <coughs> the politics of handouts has killed this country, the youth inclusive. What they should be asking for are not handouts and patronage politics in the national budget, but job creation education that is tailored for market requirements. So I have to go. Thank you very much, dear, dear guests. Honorable Monica Modi, National Youth MP, thank you for coming to Spectrum. Thank you very much. Mr. Samuel Kavma, Chairman, National Youth Council. <laughs> thank you for coming. Thank you for tuning in. I've been your host, Ed Monchester. Spectrum will be back tomorrow. Up next, though, is the news in English. Do stay tuned to Radio 1. Uh, excuse me, would you like to hear about the ancient Pilipili? Mm -hmm. It has a really long battery life. That's hot. And it has an amazing built-in FM radio. That's hot. And you're never